I am uh, Greg Lord. I am at uh, Hamilton College at the Digital Humanities Initiative. Um, so my position uh, is the lead designer and software engineer at DHI. Um, and I generally do a mix of uh, things involving graphic design and web design, um, and then following through to actual project development. So uh, programming tasks and actual uh, implementing infrastructures and things for each project. Um, lately uh, veering into especially 3D work and uh, virtual environments and uh, very lately virtual reality. Um, so for Iliad's, uh, my expert role was consulting with basically a mix of all of those things. Um, design work for some of the projects, um, database and uh, web development work for others, and then uh, we had a couple of teams that were interested in game development and uh, we had the chance to sort of not only uh, try to help them develop their projects, but also sort of use that as a comparative point for the work that we're doing at DHI as well. Awesome. And can you talk a little bit more about um, whether this Iliad's experience has kind of given you material for things that you want to see in DHI, uh, sort of what you would like to take from this and apply to Hamilton's model, if there was anything? Sure, yeah. Um, so it's interesting to see the ways that people do the work that they're doing, and I think Generally speaking, in digital humanities, we all sort of can reference what we do by sort of the tools that we use or by the approaches that we take to things. But to see the research questions from a bunch of other schools and a bunch of other project teams, I think gives us a kind of chance to think about the ways that we can apply some of those things to, uh, to research and to teaching. Um, it was very useful for me this time to sort of watch research questions behind some of the same things that we're just getting the sort of formative steps of on our own work. So uh, the work that we've been doing in uh, 3D and virtual environments and games um, has been something that we apply to a sort of spatial experience or a sort of uh, geographical sense. And uh, we had a team that I was working with this week that was uh, taking that and turning that into a sort of storytelling space and relating uh, a sort of sensitivity training on the one hand, but also sort of awareness of difficult subject matter from a personal perspective. Um, and that really gave me a chance to sort of think this week about what the individual experience is or what the storytelling uh, capabilities are of a 3D space. And as we start to venture into VR, I, I really think that that has a lot of power uh, to be something that we can be applying to our own research. Um, and maybe to eventually integrating into things like the classroom or um, to projects uh, that would sort of be collaborative in this uh, storytelling sense. Mm -hmm. um, when you were working with projects, or I guess a better question would be, uh, when do you kind of get pulled into a project? What is it that you do? And um, do, you, do you kind of enter into these projects at the beginning when people <laughs> run up to against an issue right. at the end? Um, sort of from any stage, actually. I, I do a broad enough sort of mix of things on different projects that I would say that it's, it's difficult to say at what point I'll jump in, but uh, this week really bore that out with a, a group of teams. Um, so in one team's case, I was working uh, directly from a sort of formative stage as they considered what tool they wanted to use and what the educational applications for that were in terms of assignments for their students or uh, uh, like research assistantships for their students over a longer term. Um, that was a very sort of conceptual uh, conversation there, just thinking as uh, scholars, thinking as um, academic administrators, as teachers. Um, and then in another project's team, the idea of just having the project uh, sort of formulated but not knowing how to start to make it real, um, that sort of gives me the chance to think from my sort of design role of bringing all of those things to the screen and actually developing like graphic identities for these projects. So uh, in that room I was a logo designer and a graphic designer uh, consulting with a team that was first starting to think through their web presence. Um, I was also part of our Hamilton College team uh, this week in uh, the capacity that I <laughs> had the time to be. Um, and that was an interesting chance to sort of take research that I'm familiar with, with uh, one of our faculty members and uh, the team that uh, has been working on that and to start to think about new directions to take the data and the research question there. So um, something that you were involved in that's kind of like up and coming is this VR component. How would you like to see that sort of integrated into the curriculum? I think Hamilton has a pretty strong infrastructure of having D 
PHP, not only in our like little box over in CJ, but also <laughs> worked its way into the classroom. Right. And I guess kind of what role are you hoping that this uh, this new tangent will take? Right. Well, I mean, there's there's such crossover between uh, the work that we are doing in DHI and the work that has uh, started uh, recently with uh, the library and uh, ITS. Just in general, the the research and instructional design group is is thinking of some of the same questions that we are. But I think we in DHI have had a sort of research and development uh, mindset about it where we are thinking about what the tools are, what the sort of capabilities of those tools are, and exploring those things from the research question of what kind of uh, access to data can we provide, what sort of ways can we do a different thing with a research topic than you would do with more traditional tools. So virtual reality for me is very much about getting into that sort of direct personal experience and thinking about the sensory experience of a place and thinking about the sort of immediacy and immersion of um, what kinds of uh, things you would put on somebody's head in this sort of uh, virtual reality experience. So when we think about projects like our uh, comparative Japanese film project and the idea of standing in a theater that's no longer there in the real world but trying to get the experience of what uh, a, f a film would have looked like screened in that space or what the audio from that experience would have sounded like both in terms of the film itself or of the performer standing at the front of the hall and speaking to the audience. Um, I think about how much that will transform in the space of actually feeling like you are the person in, uh, in that auditorium. Um, so we take things from that level, and I think that uh, you know the, the thing that we're not able to do with the sort of research project timeline is to say, these tools work, we know how they work, we know what they can do, but to translate that through the sort of pedagogical work that our colleagues uh, in LITS do with groups like RNID and start to think about uh, how can we put that to the classroom experience, what can we do to supplement the kind of uh, educational materials or strategies that we're doing in those kinds of rooms. Um, and I think that the crossover that I am excited about is saying, you know, that's, that's not work that I do myself. I, I don't know often the answer to those questions, but that I can showcase these sorts of things and I can think about what we could build to make those experiences better as those people uh, rely on their training to say this is what works, this is what I, you know, this is what these uh, classrooms need that they don't already have, or this is what these students are interested in that we can't do other ways. Has there been anything that's come out of the conversation that really is, I mean, especially because someone had a very first person narrative centric project, has there been anything that's come out that's really surprised you that you hadn't thought of? Um, an application for VR technology that you would like to, uh, you know, that you that you hadn't yeah. thought possible, but now see opportunities for. I mean, I I do think that you know, in in many ways, research projects are often answering sort of uh, questions that relate to data, and we we look at things as sort of, you know, answering questions about you know, historical things or looking at information in a very sort of visualization or sort of access way. And to see a very uh, personal story there, the idea of actually telling a sort of difficult personal narrative as, as something that would help somebody either heal from a traumatic experience or to see that as something that could maybe help a person relate to somebody else uh, that has survived an experience like that or uh, even just to sort of make the topic more real to people that aren't uh, trained or more aren't familiar with those uh, those topics. I think that that is really powerful in the sense of actually humanizing these kinds of things and uh, and making that important to, to people and making it relatable. Um, I, I think it made it a very more personal experience to me other than just in sort of, you know, sensory ways. I, it made it emotionally more personal for me. Um, it's, it's work that I'd very much like to sort of watch as it develops and see what sorts of things those scholars uh, take on as they continue to sort of unfold the, the question. So I guess how do we keep up the momentum of the Iliads? I mean, everyone's kind of <laughs> dispersed back to their respective right. campuses, and we can obviously keep in touch. but. Um, yeah, how do we, do you see, uh, do you see things at this Ilias conference that you would really like to see blossom in future conferences, things that we should be working on, improving? Yeah, um, absolutely. From here? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, 
I mean, Iliad's is, is you know, very serious, very effective summer camp. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, every, everybody here, I think, seems to be surprised, pleasantly surprised every time about how effective this is as a way to sort of foster a developing project or to actually bring a team together and sort of connect the dots that maybe are difficult to do when you're on your own campus or sort of working on your own particular field and not necessarily knowledgeable about the ones around it. So I would say that the resource that people find in each other here is definitely the takeaway. Um, you know, I, I've watched the groups that were here from Iliad's 2015 go on to stay in touch with one another and continue to consult one another on their projects. And uh, when we would either see each other at other conferences or, you know, plan to regroup at the, the next year's model, it seems like these are people who are very much invested in the community aspect of this sort of work. Um, so I would say keeping the conversation around the, the shared topics or the shared sort of um, tools or research goals that everybody has is, is the thing that uh, really carries all of this forward. And uh, along the way, I think that we have a chance to test a lot of maybe experimental models of what works for letting a team do what they need to do and learn what they need to learn. Um, I, I think we were very pleasantly surprised by a lot of the, um, the changes between 2015 and 2016's version of Iliads and actually formalizing the sort of uh, expert and coaches roles to a greater degree and saying these are coaches that would uh, help guide a team through a, a task like developing a project over a week on the one hand, um, and then bringing in a series of experts that might help with the tasks themselves or with sort of introducing people to topics or to approaches. Um, that, that seems to have been very effective, and I, I wonder if there are ways to apply some of those direct learning experiences to other models. Well, I think if, unless you want to make uh, closing remarks about your Iliad's experience, your DH experience, anything like that, Oh. Okay, just I guess just to say that it's it's really great to have the chance to meet uh, everybody that comes to this and to sort of uh, see what work is going on and to get the chance to connect and learn a lot from the process of trying to help people learn things on their own. Looking forward to uh, Iliad's 2017. <laughs>